what is up everyone welcome back to my channel today I got a very special video for you guys well more special for me because I don't have to do any lifting I mean I don't have to do any wrenching in this video because today we're gonna install some new wheels and tires on the GX 470 let's check out what we got yeah all right so what we have here is the RRW's R6H hybrid beadlock wheels um, running the 17 by 8 and a half, negative 12 offset, and in the gunmetal finish. I mean, I really wanted the matte bronze, but I feel like uh, it's time to change it up a little bit. My first instincts Jeff, definitely choose bronze, but I want to go for something a little bit cleaner and um, different for this setup. But yeah, let's check it out. Let's see what we got here. So, here's what the box looks like. It has like a nice... 4C design on top. I think that's pretty nice. So, opening it up. Ooh. Got a nice thick cardboard right here to protect the face from shipping. And the moment of truth. Holy. That looks super, super clean. All right, so what's cool about these wheels is that these are a hybrid B-Lock wheel, which means that you can mount these wheels in two different ways. One being the most common one is, um, you know, how we normally mount our regular wheels, having the, the tire bead sit behind the lip. But for you extreme off-roaders, um, you can also have the option to mount these with a beadlock ring, which means the outer lip of the, or the outer bead of the tire is gonna sit right here and then you're gonna sandwich a beadlock ring on top to secure it nice and snug so you guys can um, air down to your extreme rock crawling PSI without worrying about the tire debeating. So these wheels already come hub centric for most of the Toyota platform which is 106.2 or 106.1 uh, millimeters. So that means I don't need to run any spacers or um, hub rings to get these to fit so they're pretty much a direct bolt on but uh, one thing that you need to do is um, keep in mind that you guys do need aftermarket lug nuts as you can see um, your stock lug nuts will not fit so um, let me show you guys the lug nuts that I'm gonna be using so I picked these up from um, Precision European Auto Works and they sell these nice uh, ET style lugs. So this is what I'm going to be running. So the thread pitch for the GX and most Toyota Tacoma's 4Runners is going to be 12 M12 by 1.5. Um, I don't know what else to say. There's not much to say about it besides um, showing you guys what negative 12 looks like. I think negative 12 offset is probably the best offset for 4Runners and GX 470s because it doesn't stick out too far. <laughs> where you're going to run into a lot of rubbing issues where you have to cut up your chassis and bang a lot of stuff and it's not going to sit um, tucked in so you're just going to get that happy medium where you have that nice mild aggressive poke without doing too much uh, modifications to your fenders and stuff like that to get it to fit without rubbing. I'm going to be wrapping the R6H with these Falcon Wild Peaks AT3s. I'm going to be running the 285 70 17. Um, if you're not lifted, I would recommend running 265 70 17 so you don't have to rub it, uh, run into a lot of rubbing issues. But if you are leveled and you are lifted, like mine, um, 285 70 17 should be relatively easy to run without running into too much rubbing issues. But I mean, talk is cheap, right? So let me show you guys. Let's go install these puppies. Woo! Definitely lucked out on this one today. Um, I didn't realize um, this tire shop changed their work hours during COVID, but. Um, Luckily, I was um, able to talk to the owner of this place and he was able to help me just do the mountain balancing on the wheels and tires and I'll mount the wheels myself onto the car. So, we're gonna get some wheels today. Wow. 
what's good now as you can see it's already the next day I ran out of sunlight yesterday so I couldn't put on the wheels um, the tire shop I took yesterday rush tires couldn't do it because um, they already closed when I got there and they did me a favor by doing the mounting and balancing so the least I can do is a little bit of wrenching I mean as I said in the beginning of the video there wasn't gonna be any wrenching but you know what would my channel be without any wrenching right <laughs> so let's go put on the wheels Just like that, we're done. I torqued down both sides. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get an alignment after. As you can see, there's a lot of positive camber. So I can't really show you what um, the fitment really looks like, but the rears, you can definitely get a good idea. I mean, yeah, it still has a little bit of positive camber, so I'm just gonna wait till after the alignment to show you guys what the fitment actually looks like. Um, one thing to keep in mind is um, whenever you get new wheels, um, after you torque it down the first time, after you drive for maybe a couple miles, um, you're gonna wanna retorque them again. But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and take this thing down to get a little alignment, shall we? So I found a little pullout right here, a nice shady pullout out here in the canyons. I have no clue where I'm at, but I just randomly drove and I found this spot. I'm like, ooh, this is a really nice spot. But um, I guess the wait is over. Let me show you guys what the fitment looks like. So, if you guys didn't know already, I'm running um, 18, I mean 17 by 8 and a half, negative 12 offset, and you can see how much poke the negative 12 has. It's very, very subtle, because anything above negative 12, like let's say you go like negative 25 or negative 38, and stuff like that, you're going to run into a lot of rubbing issues, and you're going to have to start hammering stuff in, and chopping a lot of the bumper, and I mean chopping a lot of the chassis and stuff like that and I, I don't want to deal with it so I wanted something uh, like the most aggressive without having to cut up the car so the only rubbing issue that I have right now since I move the wheels forward by increasing the caster to gain clearance from the um, the body mount um, I do rub a little bit on the bottom of the fender liner so what I'm probably gonna do is I'm just gonna cut that section out and it'll get rid of the rubbing issues or like if you guys are already planning to do a uh, bumper chop, I mean, that's gonna get rid of it too. So I, I might just do it later, but for now, I'm just gonna chop off the fender liner just to um, fix the, the rubbing issue. Once I do that, it's pretty much good to go. But just to give you an idea how much it pokes, um, I would say it, the tire pokes out about an inch to an inch and a half. So it's not, it's not tucked in the fender. So you have that slight poke for that aggressive uh, fitment. So a negative 12 is the best offset for GX and foreigners hands down. I mean, yeah, the negative 25 looks great. Don't get me wrong. But the trouble you have to go through to get negative 25 to fit without rubbing is it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> I, don't, I don't plan on chopping up my, my chassis real soon. Maybe in the future, I don't know. If this thing goes long travel, then why, why not? And if you made it this far to the video, I appreciate you for watching the video and um, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.